Welcome back to building a multi-million dollar spec house with me, David Windsor. Today, I'm going to be talking about steel draw, steel shop drawings and like the footings and foundations. And I learned a lot and I'm going to share it with you. My dad, who has helped me out through this project, he's a retired general contractor. He's been, he's been retired for maybe 20 years. He's 74 years old. More than that, he's 76 years old. And uh, he's helped me out in this project and he had to come in and help me with the steel shop drawings and verify all this stuff. So I'm going to go through with you what I learned with my dad and what I learned that we had to submit to the architect and the engineer for confirmation. Um, and I'm just going to teach you what I learned throughout this whole process. And so hopefully you learned something as well. So bear with me as I kind of poke my way through it. So there's a little bit of steel in this house and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the drawings first and I'm going to be moving around a lot. So sorry if it's getting a little wonky, but over here in our schedule, we get our steel beams, FB 14, 13 could be glue lamb or steel, glue lamb or steel for seven. But so we wanted to see if we could change 14 to a glue lamb beam rather than steel. So we asked them that there's this moment frame that's here. So a lot of what we did is working on this moment frame and getting the steel shop drawing from the steel manufacturer. And then with my dad, we put together the, the specs of it and had our questions. So as you can see over here, there's a lot of questions we have. So this is a big beam 12 by 53. And it, it's a column that goes, it's a column that goes up that supports the deck, um, the, the deck on the second level. And it also says over here in the notes that we could use um, all posts for steel beams are HSS four by four. So, but a four by four is pretty small. And on a, a house like this, which is, you know, grandiose and, you know, it's, it's a really nice house. You don't want these dinky little poles. So we asked if we could do a six by six pole um, and rather than this 12 by 53, have an embed and then just weld it to the embed. So these are some of the questions we were asking along the way. This box girder, uh, I've never worked with a box girder, to be honest. I don't really know what it, I can't fully visualize it in my brain, but there's no details for that. So we had to get that. That being said, so we worked our way through the drawings and we end up here. And this is the steel shop drawings. And so this is what the, the manufacturer puts together and they're, they're calculating certain things. But as we went through it with my dad. So here you go. So this is that moment frame. So the moment frame goes up, it goes over and it goes down. And when it goes over, we, we had to calculate ourselves and do the math that the across part is 17 feet. And what's crazy is nobody provides you with this dimension. So you have to do all the math yourself and make sure of it. And then all these bolt holes and all. So then we had to get the elevations. So once we got the elevations, so all these are the elevation of where the house is sitting. So 63 and 97 is the top of wall, the concrete wall. And then this embeds down into the concrete. Uh, so then we get that elevation and then we go up, you know, to the next elevation. And then we go up to the final elevation. So we know how tall this thing's going to be, how wide it is across. Then you know, in these shop drawings, we were, you know, this is calling for those HSS four by four. So we're requesting again, if we can do the six by six. And if so, how big is the embed plate going to be? And then there's the Nelson studs that come down that embed into the concrete and how big do those have to be? So we need a detail for that. We have to cut and feel weld this to length. Um, that's what we're requesting that we can do that. Can we, you know, manufacture it a couple inches bigger and then on on site, the welder can, can cut it and put it into place. So then over the 3D drawing, we realized that those columns coming up and supporting the deck, there's only one, they forgot to draw in the second column, which is really crazy because you can see that there's an I-beam here and they actually drew in an I-beam here and, but they didn't give us a footing. So there's nothing that this I-beam sits on. There's no footing yet. So that's a detail that the architect and the engineer missed. So we had to pick that up. So all these are, you know, we're asking, there's no detail for this. We're providing a connection detail. So I'm going to get you down to the moment frame now. And the moment frame 
is the one in the shop drawings we had all the questions with the elevations we had to work on all that stuff so all this i had to draw and there's no connection showing us coming back out at us there's no connection so we need to figure out what it is and if so can we use a glue lamp beam rather than that's the rb14 that i showed you in the beginning if you remember and then lastly you can kind of see with this moment frame so then over over here is the footing and so in the footing it's this is where i really need my dad this was what was crazy to me so in the footing there's no plate detail of what we got to do and so we decided we were going to put j bolts um we were going to take j bolts at basically 12 inches like this and all they had at the store was 12 inches and it's a minimum 14 required so we did that and then we took these couplers and we put them on the j bolt three quarter inch and then I took a two foot all thread and brought it out. But so that what's crazy about this is where I needed my dad was, so in this section right here, this is our base plate. This is, so we had to go make a template together and I'm actually gonna go over here on the right and zoom in on the template. And then I'm gonna go back out to the footing drawing over here and show you. So this template, we had to make this out of plywood and this is the first time I've ever done this. This was news to me. So we made it out of plywood. And then we had to, we had to calculate over here on the screen. We had to calculate from, so this is where the moment frame is. So this is 17 feet here. So then we had to have this plywood over here and account for that there's going to be two inches of wall or two two by fours here. So we take those two by fours right here and we calculate that. And then it was, you know, and so they now put that template right on the edge of this. So that template's there. So those J bolts come out of here. The, the J bolts come directly out and then into the all thread, but it has to be perfect on both sides. And then that's, that's continuous all the way up for another six feet with the wall. And then that's where the steel sits and has to be, you know, spot on obviously, because we're going to pre-cut those bolts. And so I didn't know how to do the template. I didn't, that's something that was news to me. I didn't know I had to do that. I thought the concrete guys would have provided that. And it's a good thing I had my dad. So that's that's something I learned, you know. And if there's other things that we didn't do in this exercise that you've done before, and please share it in the comments. I'm, as you can see, I'm learning as I'm going. But this was this was a cool learning lesson for me. I, I learned a lot, you know. And these steel shop drawings are they're really intricate. So it, it allows my brain to kind of calculate more of what's going on, and because I don't see the construction as well, you know, this is the portion I'm more, a little newer to. So. It's exciting for me to start calculating it in my brain and seeing it in a different way because it's it's in way more 3D, you know, type intricate detail. And then someone like my dad, who's kind of a savant when it comes to this stuff, just seeing his brain calculated it, it's it's old school and it's it's really cool. So that's all I got for today. We're forming the footings today and we're pouring concrete in three days. There's a shortage of concrete, but we're 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 on track to be on schedule. We're a little bit behind, but it's just a tough time right now with COVID. Everyone, everyone's busy. You know the market's going up. Lumber's going crazy. Concrete's up seven dollars and fifty cents a yard. Excuse me. It's who knows, but you got to stick with it. So we're a little. We're about a week behind probably by the time we finish with walls, but we should be able to pick that up. I'll I'll show that through that throughout the schedule. Thanks for watching. Tune in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. And as always, you can go over to davidwindsor.com and get some of the free templates that I use to work out my software and, and schedule jobs and all the above. So thanks for watching. See you next time.